These are the answers to the exam review one through 25 D. So in question number one, so you probably know what the answer to it is already. In question number one, you have a flipped opposite mirror image. So that flipped opposite mirror image is a reflection. In question number two, writing the rule, just pick a letter and go from that letter to the same letter prime. So for example, from A to A prime, how do you get from here to here? You're counting left seven, down three. In question number three, this shape is turning, so it is a rotation. In question number four, you're figuring out what you multiply by. How do you get from A to A prime, for example? You can pick any letter to the same letter prime. I wrote down the coordinates for A. I wrote down the coordinates for A prime. How do you get from X value to X value? What do you have to multiply by? How do you get from two to four? Two times what equals four? Two times two equals four. How do you get from three to six? You multiply by two. In question number five, which one makes it bigger or smaller? Bigger or smaller, less than or greater than is a dilation. In question number six, what two angles are not congruent? Not congruent means not equal to each other, not the same size. Notice that you had four possible possibilities here. If we look at choice A, choice A has this angle and this angle, H and I. Notice that H is a big fat obtuse angle while I is a little tiny acute angle. Those are not the same size, so they are not congruent. In question number seven, you're given this angle and this angle. They're in the same place. They're in the upper right and upper right. They are equal to each other. So you want to set up the, this equation, 4x plus 5 equals x plus 32. Notice that they even look the same size. If they look the same size, they are the same size. They're equal to each other. Solve that equation, you get x equals 9. In question number 8, which pairs of angles are alternate interior? Alternate interior are inside the parallel lines in opposite corners. So that's like three and six or one and five. In question number nine, you're given this angle. This angle is 35. They want to know what this angle is. They're in the same place. They're in the upper right and upper right. If they look the same, they are the same, they're equal to each other. So this one's 35, this one is also 35. In question number 10, these two angles added together equal this outside angle. So you could set up the equation x plus 34 equals 67, or you could just take the outside angle and subtract the inside angle. 67 minus 34 gives you 33. Question number 11, your radius goes halfway across the circle. Your height is how tall it is. One third, there's been a couple of people who've asked me, how do you type one third into the calculator? One third is top divided by bottom, one divided by three. So one third times pi times four squared times seven, get a big long decimal. All of these questions say round to the nearest tenth. So you get 117.3. In question number 12, they give you the diameter. The diameter goes all the way across the circle, in this case, a sphere. Um, we don't want the diameter, we want the radius. So you have to take 25 and divide by two to give you the radius of 12.5. So four thirds times pi times 12.5 cubed, 8,181.2. In question number 13, Three is your radius, 11 is your height. So pi times three squared times 11, you get 311 or 311.0. In question number 14, they give you the diameter. We never want the diameter, we want the radius. So you have to divide the diameter by two. Two divided by two is a radius of one. That's the number that you have to sub in for your radius. So pi times one squared times six, you get 18.8. .8. In question number 15, for the hemisphere, 0.5 times 4 thirds times pi times the radius, they give you it in the word problem, which is 11 cubed. So you get 2,787.6. In question number 17, changing a fraction into a decimal, 
you have to do the top number divided by the bottom number. So negative one divided by 20, you get negative 0 0.05. In question number 17, which expression is not equivalent or not equal to the other three? Three of them are the same, one of them is different. When you type these into the calculator, you get 0.125. A is 0 0.0125. So that one's different from the other three. In question number 18, change it into a decimal, change it into a decimal. You end up with 5.1 and 5.1. Those are equal to each other. In question number 19, putting the numbers in order from least to greatest, make them look like money. Now, remember, sometimes you're going to have to go a step farther to make it um, to compare the decimals. In this case, you do have to go a step farther. So if we make them look like money, we have $2.31, 261, 231, and 260. Well, these are really not equal to each other, the 231 and 231. The next number here is a zero. The next number here is a zero. The next number here is an eight, but the next number here is a zero. Therefore, this one would be your first one. That's your lowest number. This one would be your next biggest number. Then we have 260. So that would be your third biggest number. And this one is your biggest number. In the next one, graphing it on the number line, change it into a decimal. This ends up being 3.9. 3.9 is halfway in between 3.8 and 4.0. In 21 through 25, you have to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember that your c side is your slanted side. Doesn't matter what you pick for a or for b. So you're going to have 30 squared plus 80 squared. You could type that right into the calculator. When you do that, you get 7,300. Remember that the last step is to take the square root. So the square root of 7,300 rounded to the nearest tenth is 85.4. In question number 22, this side is your C side. All right. Um, it doesn't matter what you have for A or for B, but this time we're solving for either A or B. So in the previous question, when we solved for C, we added the numbers together before taking the square root because we were solving for C. Now we're solving for A or for B. So you have to subtract the numbers before taking the square root anytime that you're solving for A or for B. So 625 minus 576 gives you 49. Take the square root of 49, you get seven. In question number 23, you're looking for which one forms a right triangle. You wanna know which one is your yes. So what you have to remember is that your C side is your biggest number. They don't always go in order A, B, C. These two happen to go in order A, B, C, but they don't always. So you're gonna type in this part, the A squared plus B squared, 20 squared plus 99 squared is 10,201. On this side, we have C squared, which is just 101 squared, which is 10,201. These two numbers match. This is your yes. This one forms the right triangle. This would be your answer on your final exam. This one does not check. Notice that we end up with 74 on one side and 81 on the other. That one does not form a right triangle. In question number 24, you have two different triangles. You have this yellow triangle and you have this green triangle. You need to find the C side on each of them. You need to find the slanted side. So for this top one, you end up with 13. The side ends up being 13. And for this one, this side ends up being 65 when we add together and then take the square root. So we end up with 13 and 65. You wanna know the distance from car to car. So you have to add those two answers together in the end. 65 plus 13 gives you 78. In question number 25, your legs. Your legs are your A and your B. Your hypotenuse is your seesaw. So when you go to add these together, you have 16 squared plus 63 squared, which gives you 4,225. Take the square root, you end up with 65. Don't worry about this thing. This is for a different year, right? Questions on one through 25. All right, open up 26 through 50, please. Open up 26 through 50. We're going to go over 26 through 50. In question number 26, now we go all the way back to September to chapter one. 
doing scientific notation. Put a decimal point after your first non-zero number. So the decimal point goes in between the three and the eight. So write that number down, 3.85. And then you have to count how many places to get to the end. One, two, three, four, five places to get to the end. So it's times 10 to the fifth power. I think question number 27 is the most difficult question on the whole entire thing. Remember that you have to do the distance divided by the speed, the distance divided by the speed. When you type in these numbers into the calculator, you have to make sure because you're using scientific notation, you have to type them inside parentheses. If you don't type the parentheses, you will get them wrong. So what we're typing into the calculator is the distance. The distance is 1.5 times 10 to the 16th divided by your speed or your rate, which is three times 10 to the eighth. So though this is what you're typing into the calculator. When you do that, you get an answer of 50 million. Make that into scientific notation, put a decimal point after your first non-zero number, that's where the five comes from, and then count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places to get to the end. So you end up with five times 10 to the seventh power. Again, you have to use parentheses. If you don't, you'll get the wrong answer. In question number 28, 19,500,000, put a decimal point after your first non-zero number. So in between the one and the nine, write that number down in front of the times 10 and then count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places to get to the end. So it's times 10 to the seven. In question number 29, all you have to do is type that right into the calculator. You get seven, negative 729. In question number 30, six to the fifth times six to the seventh. You keep the base the same, so the big number stays the same, the six stays the same, and then you have to add your exponents. Five plus seven is 12. Question number 31, a taxi cab charges $2.50. So just getting inside the taxi, you're getting charged 250. Plus, so plus sign, 15 cents per mile. So 15 cents times the number of miles. I know that in class kick, I told you to use an X. I used an M there for miles. And it's a total charge of 975. So equals 975. In question number 32, you have a one in front of this T. You need to get all the letters onto one side. So I would get rid of this plus one by doing minus one T and minus one T. These one T's cancel out. Four T minus one T is three T. Bring down your minus seven, bring down your equal sign, bring down your negative 10. Now it's just a two-step equation. So add seven to both sides, divide by three, you end up with T equals negative one. Very similar question in number 33, except you have to do the distributive property first. Two times two T is four T, two times one is two. So we end up with a four T plus two on that right-hand side. On the left-hand side, just bring down the 8t minus 10. Subtract 4t from both sides, then it just becomes a two-step equation. Add by 10, divide by four, you get t equals three. In question number 29, the easiest way to do this one, Jeremy has 295 stamps, Jonas has 75 fewer, is just to subtract the two numbers. 295 minus 75 is 220. In question number 35, you go to solve this equation, distribute, distribute, you end up with 1x plus 4 equals 1x minus 4. Get all the letters on one side, so minus 1x minus 1x. These letters cancel out. These letters cancel out. All the letters cancel out. You're left with 4 equals negative 4. 4 does not equal negative 4. Those numbers are different, so it is no solution. In question number 36, you have to use the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All points are written x comma y. This is your first point, so these get ones. This is your second point, so these get twos. Sub the numbers into the formula where they belong, so you have 6 minus 14 over 6 minus 2. When you do that and you subtract, you get negative 8 over 4. Now, technically, that is a correct answer. However, remember on the final exam, it will be multiple choice. 
you won't see the non-reduced answer. If they'll show the reduced answer. You have to divide by four and divide by four. So you get negative two or negative two over one. In question number 37, Bob made $15 for doing five hours of lawn work. You have to divide to find his hourly rate. 15 divided by five is three. Question number 38, this is a hard one for a lot of people. All right, these are your X values. You need to sub it into the X spot and sub it into the X spot. These are your Y values. You need to sub it into the Y spot and sub it into the Y spot. Trial and error, all right? Try a point, sub it in, see if it works or not. It has to check in both equations for it to be a solution. If it only checks in one, but not the other, it's not the right answer. It has to check in both equations to do that. So when we sub in zero four, we end up with 12 equals 12 for this equation, four equals four for that equation. They check, so that is the correct answer. Number 39 is one that is tough for a lot of people. You have to rearrange to get the Y all by itself. To get this y all by itself, the first thing that we need to do is subtract 7x. So minus 7x minus 7x. You can't do a plain number minus a letter. So 11 minus 7x is just 11 minus 7x. However, to get it in the right form, I want to switch around the order. So 11 minus 7x becomes negative 7x plus 11 when you switch around the order. Bring down your negative one, whoops, bring down your negative one y. Now, we don't want negative one y, we want one y, we want y. So we need to divide by negative one, divide by negative one, divide by negative one. Now we have the y equals all by itself. Negative divided by a negative is a positive seven. 11 divided by negative one is negative 11. So we end up with y equals seven x minus 11. In question number 40, you want to choose dots where the line crosses that background grid. So I'm going to choose those dots because that's where the line crosses that background grid. How do you get from dot to dot to dot? Well, we're going up one over three, up one over three. That's the number that goes in front of your X in your equation where the line crosses the y axis is your y intercept. That's where we get the plus five from because it crosses at five. Question number 41, the graph is going down, so it is decreasing. Question number 42, I wanna know the domain. The domain are your x values. Remember that all points are written x comma y. So I could care less about all the Y values. All I want to know about are the X values. So this is your X value here is five. It's the first number in each point. It's the one, it's the four, and it's the seven. It's just the first number in each point. Number 43, this is a hard one. What you have to remember is the slope formula is in question number 36. You can always go back to that question and look and see what the slope formula is. Choose two points. I chose zero, zero and five, 10 as my two points. Sub those in, you get a slope of two. That is choice A. In question number 44, you're looking for the non-linear. Non-linear means not a consistent pattern. All right, not a consistent pattern. So here we're subtracting by one each time, that's gonna form a line. Here we're adding by three each time, that's gonna form a line. Same thing with this one, adding by three, it's gonna form a line. Notice in this one, we have plus two, plus three, plus five. That one's not going to form a line because it's not the same each time. In question number 45, what we're really testing here is you are looking for the y-intercept. When x equals zero, whatever your y value is, is your plus or minus. So this zero comma two, that two represents this two right here. You will be able to tell it just from the plus or minus. In question number 46, which statement is true? 
um, of the students who like chicken wings. So here's all the people who like chicken wings. More people play football than not, 35 versus 30. In question number 47, this is, as we go from left to right, this is going down, so it is negative. In question number 48, as the temperature increases, the rainfall decreases. That one's true. Notice that our temperature is increasing going across the bottom. What's happening to our amount of rain? That is going down. In question number 49, this one's hard for a lot of people, but you can get rid of two choices right away. Our line as we go from left to right is going up. Therefore, we can get rid of B and C right away because those have negative slopes. Negative slopes would mean the line is going down. So I can get rid of B and C right away. So now I either have a slope of five or a slope of one. Well, you have to take a look at the graph and figure out what you're really doing. Are we going up one over one or are we going up five over one? If we were going up five over one, we'd go from about 22 here to about 27, and then only over one. Notice that there's five in between here. So our dot would be here, and then a dot would be here, and then a dot would be here, and then a dot would be here, all right? That's clearly not on the line, so it can't be choice A. It has to be choice D, up one over one. And then in question number 50, make an estimate for 40. So go over to 40, go up to the line, go straight across, it's just slightly above 70. So that would be choice C. Those are what your 50 questions look like on your final exam.